next speaker is Phil Darrow. Uh, Phil was one of the three lead authors of the Common Core State Standards in Mathematics. Um, I forget the names of the other two. It's basically his fault. And uh, Phil uh, has a great wine collection as well. And I um, recommend if you're in Berkeley anytime, drop by and I'll give you a nice glass of wine. Yes, you're invited. Um, I also graduated from high school in Metuchen High School, just a couple train stops away. So it, there's a lot of uh, rumors of, of teacher testing teachers, evaluation of teachers. And I try to find out what sort of thing those people had in mind. And it's a multiple choice test. So here are some of the questions that I saw. Making sense is basic human response. Oh. We missed that one. We've got to be fast. It's a test. Mile wide, inch deep refers to the Raritan River. Too little time per concept. Superficial curriculum. It's a layer of cheesy politics that has settled over our attempts to make things better. But this mile wide, inch deep really is a big important part of the problem. And it's important that we realize it's a statement about what's wrong with our curriculum, what we're teaching, the Common Core is really tr an attempt to make it better. So if your curriculum is a mile wide and an inch deep, how many grades would it take to fill the Raritan River? This is a word problem. Half as much as the Remedial River? <laughs> but 15 seconds is tough on a test, isn't it? <clears throat> so why do students have to do math problems? Well, we all know it's really to get the answers because somebody's waiting for them. Uh, but answers are part of the process. They're important, but they're not the product. The product is what kids learn. And so we, and if answers, if we're trying to teach kids mathematics, not just collect answers, we have to break uh, some habits, even against the pushback we'll get from kids, just show me how to do it, which means we're going to have to stop teaching them gimmicks like the butterfly method for adding fractions with unlike denominators. So I have to include this in every one of my talks. So we're going to draw the wings and the body. And on top of the head, we're going to put a plus sign as a reminder, a multiplication sign on the tail. Multiply 4 times 1, we get 4. 3 times 3, we get 9. We add 9 plus 4, put 13 in the head. 9 times 3, 12 in the tail. What does it have to do with mathematics? There are other examples that we just learned in more depth. Foil. It's interesting. We have the same set of examples here. Foil instead of the canceling. <laughs> What's the most common response on tests that kids give to x to the 5 over x to the 5? Zero. Everything cancels out. So how do you know when you're observing good instruction? This is what all the principals are asking. That's multiple choice, too. You see a lot of students going, ooh, ooh, ooh. The audience for all the student talk is the teacher. When I get called on, all I have to do is say something vague enough so the teacher can see whatever they want. So how are we supposed to deal with differences among students? Deny and cover? Just give a lecture, assume they're all ready for it? The, seriously, though, the first response in a classroom is to make the different ways of thinking visible. Not to take away the grade level problem because they're having trouble with it, but if necessary, to give them more help with the grade level problem. But the productive struggle is really what it's all about. That's what learning looks like. And then having kids learn to explain their way of thinking so the other kids understand it. So explaining, the, when does the teacher explain? Is direct instruction uh, gone? No. You explain it when they're ready. And that's going to be at the end of the lesson, not the beginning of the lesson. So after they've had their own way of thinking and struggled and had a chance to explain so other kids understand, and they did more than answer getting, they actually got to the mathematics, which is in the explanations, 
then there's a chance to do the explaining. So what we're really asking you to do is to step away from the peculiar world of mathematics and teach the way we normally teach in many other subjects when we teach those well.